You are listening to the Crazy Town Podcast, Mediocre Moments, Volume 6, the best of Season 2. TNT. I am a present and accounted for. We're getting into some more awesome shit from the season. Lots of cool things coming up. Don't, don't, don't look at me with those eyes when you say <laughs> that. All right. All right. All right. Here comes some clips, guys. Enjoy the show. Welcome to another episode of the Crazy Town Podcast, Mediocre Moments, Volume 6, the best of Season 2. I'm your host, Jonas, and I'm here with TNT Dynamite, the explosive one, TNT, D-I-N-O, M-I-G-H-T. Ooh, I like it. Yeah, it was like a wave almost. Yeah. Yeah. Can't get uh, copyright strike on that one. Yeah, we can't. No. Got more hot fire, best of clips. Hot fire, like best of, worst of, just straight from the mouth Mediocre of Dylon. Of. Yeah, Dylon's here. All right, Dylon. Oh no, that's not him. That was me being bad. <laughs> Whatever, dude. <laughs> what what, what right. are we starting out with here? Oh uh, well, first, uh-huh. make sure you follow us on Twitch. Oh yeah, Twitch.tv forward slash Crazy Town Media. All of our season three podcasts are on there live. Yeah, give us money. Yeah, that too, I guess. <laughs> Crazy. Crazy Town Media on YouTube is our channel with all of our gaming videos and everything else Crazy Town related, and on Twitter at Crazy Town Media. Starting out TNT from episode twenty again, two episodes in a row. Best of starting with episode twenty. The bum fight guys are in trouble again. The bum. Oh, okay, I remember this. Yeah, they were in Thailand. They tried to do some things that you shouldn't be doing in Thailand. You shouldn't do that anywhere. That's true. (laughs) What shouldn't they do, folks? Find out in this clip. We'll be right back. Where am I? So you do remember the bum fight videos? Sure, we're getting right to it. They're fucking disgusting. I hate. I like. I had a lot of people that I knew that were like, "Dude, you gotta check out these." And I watched like eight seconds of one, and I'm like, "I'm not watching this. This is fucking disgusting." Like watching, they're like, "Here, bum. Here's eight dollars. Why don't you fight this other bum?" All right. And they would like destroy each other in the street for fucking eight dollars, or like do dumb shit and hurt themselves. Yeah. All right. I'm glad you feel this way. I, I really. Wonder, I was wondering what 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 uh, stance you were gonna take. Oh no no no! I I thought it, I thought it was absolutely disgusting. Okay. Did you watch them? No, I've never. I, seen I them. mean, did you even like? Watch a clip to see what the hell it was. Not a single one. I've just heard about it through mainly South Park, but I knew it was a real thing. Yeah, yeah. Somebody brought the VHS tape over back in the day. (laughs) Because that's when it was. It was like the early, late 90s, early 2000s. So it was like on the cusp. And I was like, like, yeah, and I put it in for like two seconds. And I'm like, this is fucking ridiculous. Like, Mm -hmm. this is. So anyways, these guys are obviously pretty trash human beings, right? Yeah. There's a, there's, it's kind of a two-part story I have here. So. These guys, this was in actually in 2014. It's a little old, but so they so they went to Thailand. The two guys who created bum fights. Right. There's a third guy, but I'll talk about him in a minute. Right. He kind of came in later. So they go to Florida. Yeah, they go, yeah, they go to Florida, and they decided they would send a package home from 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 Thailand to the United States. You know, a little souvenir from their lady boy experiences they had over there. Wow. I mean. <laughs> Lady boy I feel these guys, we can talk about them any way we want. Uh, if, if you, I'm not saying lady boys. Go ahead. But yeah. That's a real thing, though. It's not like a, that's not a derogatory term. They call them lady boys. What do what these lady boys do? It's the, it's the transvestite prostitutes in Thailand. They call them lady boys. They're like obviously men, not even like, like transsexuals who like dress up to look like female. They literally, they still look like a guy. They don't even try to look like a woman. They just put on women's clothes and makeup, and they call themselves lady boys. All right, let's keep going. Yeah, that was it. Keep sitting, yeah, okay, lady boys. <laughs> <laughs> You've never heard anyone say anything about lady boys before? I mean, I guess, but yeah, if they like lady boys, it's fine. Yeah, man, that's fine. I'm not against adults. transsexuals, man. They can fucking dress up like a goddamn chicken if they want. Right, maybe they didn't have a fifi. Maybe, <laughs> right. 
So, you know, who doesn't want to send home a little souvenir from your vacation? What did they send? Oh. Well, they ended up arrested in Thailand. Uh Uh-huh. I mean, that should be fun, right? I'm sure Thailand prison is good. (laughs) I don't know. I'd assume not, honestly. Well, yeah, I was being facetious. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they probably, maybe they, I doubt they need a Fifi there. They're probably the Fifi of everybody else. Mm Mm-hmm. That's sweet. I love how this ties in. You didn't even know what I was going to talk about. That's sweet white American meat. I know that. Oh, a piece of that. that's so gross. <laughs> Fucking. Because, I mean, like, I mean, Thailand's a third world country, right? I think so. I'm pretty sure that's where, like, if you have a couple hundred dollars, you can live like a king for, like, a couple months or something. Yeah, I think a guy I knew, like, uh, told me he went there and, like, you can get, like, he was telling me about, like, you can get, like, steak dinner and a foot massage at the same time, like, for, like, $15. <laughs> <laughs> you can get that in the south too man. Yeah, right. dude wouldn't that be awesome need a badass steak and get like a foot massage at the same time yeah that'd be pretty <laughs> yeah that would oh be kind of cool oh, oh, i know what that'd be like <laughs> so so all right so what were they shipping let's why don't you take a guess what what if they were shipping would get them arrested I'm thinking they were probably sending uh, drugs because there's a lot of drugs in Thailand yeah but it wasn't drugs. That's close. No, not at all. Take another. Take a wild guess. Like take a guess that isn't like you would like. Obviously, drugs would be the first thing somebody would think of. They sent home lady boys. <laughs> There's a lady boy in a box. <laughs> lady boy in a box. That's a great service. <laughs> you just ship. It's like a, when you buy a mail order bride, but you just ship a lady boy over in a crate. He comes out. He's like, "Hey, what's up, guys? I'm here." Wow. I wonder, like. Okay, do you think you could ship yourself in, like, a box somewhere? I think you'd probably either, A, die, <laughs> or it's so... I mean, this has happened before. Oh, yeah, I'm this sure. This has happened before. I think somebody actually made it to the, the house. You would have to go freight, though. You couldn't... Because, I mean, yeah. like, you can't... Bring, even, like, you were... If, like, we were, like, 150-pound guys, you, like, you could take, take a fucking 150-pound box into the UPS store, like, hey, I, uh... Really not. I need to ship this out. <laughs> They'd throw that shit in the back. <laughs> and you're like, Ugh. And they're like, what the fuck? Yeah, you'd have to go, like, super first class or some shit, but it's probably cheaper than a plane well, ticket. Well, freight is normally, like, they just load it with, like, cranes and shit onto, like, a, a semi or whatever. You know what I mean? Semi or a boat or whatever. You gotta do next there. day delivery. You gotta pack a lunch. Uh, you gotta take a book and a little LED light. You use the bathroom before you go. You just poop yourself. Wear a diaper. <laughs> I mean, if yeah. you're going to that much of an extreme to get overseas or something, <laughs> I think you're all right with shit in your pants. Yeah. I wonder how much that would cost. That's a good idea. Let's try it. Why don't we ship you to no, Amsterdam? Well, it's always me. It's going to be you one of these times. Well, I got to talk about it. <laughs> Anyways, they they sent a preser- preserved human remains, no. an infant's head, a baby's foot, and an hey. adult heart. Why? They were stolen from a medical museum of one of Bangkok's largest hospitals. Why? Well, here's what they said they were shipping. Oh yeah, they what they actually what they told the Bangkok authorities was that they found them at a Thailand night market and they purchased them. Why? They made a million. They made millions of dollars off fucking getting bums to fight each other for ten dollars. So they decided to steal entrails. Yeah, they're preserved. It's like a shrunken head or something. I don't know if they're in a jar. Well, didn't like a screen. Like... Why do they preserve entrails, <laughs> dude? So it's like... Thailand. Thailand has fucked up shit going on, man. They have a different culture. A lot of different cultures. I guess, man. This just seems like why was it there to be stolen, and why is it? What value does that have? Right. They just want it on their mantle. <laughs> it's, oh, hey, there's a. There's an infant's head on my mantle, preserved. That's cool, right? That really gets the ladies I hear. The girl comes over and you got a preserved human heart on the shelf. <laughs> the panties disintegrate. Yeah, yeah. Talk about yeah. They, they wash off into the next room. <laughs> they just next thing you know, you're like, she's like, oh my god, where'd my pants go? <laughs> you're like, I saw that human heart, and I just. So what they declared that they were shipping home. Mm-hmm. This is probably what got them in trouble. They declared they shipped a puzzle unlimited collector's edition. A streamer cap and an antique train collector E. Well, I don't know what any of that stuff is. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Like you said a bunch of words and they were words in the English language, but <laughs> together they meant nothing. Right. So the the, Thai, the Thailand authorities probably were like, what the fuck are these? This has a to be a streamer cap. A streamer cap. What the fuck is a streamer cap, Jonas? I have no idea. It doesn't even make sense. It's like uh, what you wear when you stream on Twitch. 
They, oh. They bought a new hat <laughs> to wear on Twitch and shipped it home. I was going to say something derogatory towards Twitch, but mm, yeah. it's probably not in my best interest. We can't, we can't hurt our own. I don't want Jeff Bezos coming to my house. Is maybe. he coming? We might talk shit about his brand. Wow. Oh, he's part of the Twitcher. He owns it. He's Twitchy. He owns it. Mr. Twitchy. Jeff Bezos. Yeah. Man. It should be us. He has an empire of like 30 fucking companies. <laughs> It all started in a room, man. We, we're in a room now. Next thing you know, we're going to own a casino. Crazy Town Casino. Yeah, I'm just looking for that. And by the way, Illuminati hit us up. Yeah, right. We're we're ready. <laughs> we're, wow. We're ready. No, We, we okay. haven't done our Illuminati episode yet. <laughs> we Spoiler should. alert. Yeah, we can do Illuminati, that. Illuminati, Rothschilds. Yeah, we'll we'll see. We'll fit them in. We'll get there. Right. I got to do some research, man. I got I to gotta come correct. Right. You know, I can't come here and be like, hey, what's an, what's an Adi? Man, we could just talk about how we feel about the Illuminati, though. Oh, boy. How do you feel? I don't know enough about it to give an opinion. How do you feel about shrunken childhoods? <laughs> That's kind of fucked up. Not, so the, no kind of. How, how long did they get for doing that? It doesn't say. That's uh, all I have about them. I but, thought, what, nothing else? That's it. They didn't do any time? Oh, I don't know. You want to Google that? Uh, they got sentenced to life 200 in 200 years with Lady Boys. Life in Florida. Wow. Wow. <laughs> they don't not even in prison, just life in Florida. <laughs> Basically. Um so worst. on a side note, you know how much fucking money they made off bum fights? Uh I don't know, how much? Six million dollars. Yeah, that sounds about it right. They said they sold three hundred thousand copies at twenty dollars a piece. It does. And they basically paid those bums maybe a thousand dollars total for like all the and that was all like door to door, word of mouth because it that was back like Girls Gone Wild shit, like n- infomercials at night and shit. Because the could, internet, w- could they sell it on that? Did I they? think late night they probably could. Like, cause, I mean, you, they had Girls Gone Wild tapes on at two in the morning. Why couldn't they have? Because the Girls Gone Wild tapes are like illegal and non exploitative. How is that not exploitative? Because you're dealing with with women who are making conscious decisions versus. Well, the bums are making conscious decisions. <sighs> yeah, but they're. Street fighting is illegal, and betting on street fighting is illegal. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I guess showing your boobs are illegal too, but dude, you know, at least I, you're had like, this, I had this guy sign a waiver. I knew who would uh, do the girls gone wild tapes, and then he would just, and then he would just cancel his debit card, <laughs> so they couldn't charge him for the next one. I don't know why he didn't just cancel. Was it you? Was this no? Guy it wasn't you, me. you? I never. I've never even actually seen a girls gone wild tape. I don't think really. Maybe I'm sure someone had one at some point back in the day. Like, I'm not gonna lie, I, I, I had a few. You ordered them? Yeah. Oh wow. Then I canceled. My- <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm not the guy you knew, but I did. I, yeah. I wasn't talking about you, and that's funny that you're like you're like that story rings so true to my heart. Get the fuck out of here! You know damn well with Columbia House, you oh. fucking took the stamps off and put them Columbia on the House fucking page the for shit, your CDs, dude. sent it in, you get like ten free CDs, and then you fucking cancel. <laughs> yeah, well, we have to buy two over the next year at full price for like ten bucks. I never bought two. I did it like three times. Really? I used to do Columbia House like a motherfucker. And BMG was the one for music. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I used to. Dude, that was, that shit was, how they made any money, I don't, well, their regular price DVDs were like $25, so. But. Well, and they ain't making any money now because they're both out of business. Yeah, right, CDs and DVDs. I guess that my business model didn't yep, work out too well. Yep, yep. So anyways, another side note real quick about this. So I guess there there was a producer with these guys that he wasn't the guy who created it. And from what I read about, it was kind of like a shady deal. Like he kind of conned these guys into giving him part of the company or something. But this guy was on Dr. Phil one day. The bum fights guy. Yeah, the produce, not the two guys who created it, the third producer guy. And I watched the clip. It was a while ago when I watched it. But so this guy, he comes on Dr. Phil and Dr. Phil, they, you know, they show a video of like bum fights and stuff a little bit. And Dr. Phil is talking about it. And in the middle of the fucking video. It cuts off, and Dr. Phil kicks the guy off the fucking stage. The guy came out dressed up like Dr. Phil in a Dr. Phil costume. And then Dr. Phil saw him and just then just start immediately starting about how despicable he was for what they did with the bum fights videos or whatever and kicked him off. But the guy's in like a cheap fake bald cap and fucking like the suit has a fake mustache on. And Dr. Phil was just like, get that, get out of here. Get off my stage. Or now you get him out of here. Yeah. Like strong country. Why? Why was he mad? I don't get it. I don't, cause I think it was part the despicableness of the bum fights videos and part the guy came out dressed up like Dr. Phil no, being an asshole. He felt disrespected. Oh, I'm sure. 
I don't know if that would have been funny. It would have made for good you, TV. You should watch that video in a minute. It's pretty fucking funny. He's just like, he's just, he's just like oh, bum fights. Is this is a spit. Get him out of here. <laughs> just like. <laughs> Oh, Dr. Phil. And the cloud uproared with applause. They, oh, they did. I oh, yeah. Imagine. Yeah, it was like fucking, it was like when uh, Jerry Springer had the fights on. It was like, Woo! He still does, man. Do they? I thought they he don't love that anymore. He still does, man. It, they used to let him, like, go at it, though. Now they, like, they come at him and, they, and the security rushes in and pulls him away real quick. Yeah, but but still- we got the highlight of that shit. Like, we were like, <laughs> that was like, it was right after school. You come home, it was just, it was like Jerry Springer and Montel Williams back to back. And fucking Jerry Springer was just like crazy ass hillbillies fucking fighting each other on stage. And that was like. Good ass black folks, just fucking whatever, dude. (laughs) They would have like strippers in the middle of the day, like get up there and like strip in bubble baths and shit. Yeah, right. They just have blurred out. Yeah. Like, this is on daytime TV. Yep. God, we had a great, and he was the fucking mayor of Cincinnati at one point. Got caught writing a personal check to a hooker. No wonder he's, that's this show. Hey. Not the smartest guy, I guess. I mean, he's a millionaire. He's got gov- more money than you how and you, I. How are you going to be the governor ever? and write a personal check to a hooker? I mean, that's just asking for them to, like, show the check to everybody. I imagine that he's made more peddling that smut that he does on daytime television than he ever would have made as mayor. That's true. And way less uh, pressure. Yeah, he doesn't have to do anything. He just sits there and goes, <laughs> oh, what do you think? He reads a statement off a card and then watch two people fight for 20 minutes. <laughs> yeah. Chastity, what do you think about this? And then that's it. Then they fight. They don't even say anything. So, all right. Um, on that note, we're going to take a quick break. The Crazy Town Podcast. Trying to ship human remains back to the States. Yeah. And then saying it's like a train set. Yeah, that's a, that's a pretty much anywhere you go taboo type of thing. Yeah, so if I was in, like, Norway and tried to send human remains to the States. Pretty sure they look down on that in Norway. I mean, what if I say it's a fucking, whatever they said, like, Turbo Hat G or whatever the fuck they say. You're like, I don't know what any of those things are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't think that works anywhere you go. But the producer being on Dr. Phil and dressing up like Dr. Phil, that's kind of funny. <laughs> did, did he catch him outside? How about that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He made him a famous rapper too. That's underage dancing with famous rapper. Famous rapper. That, that is that right there. Like really, who did not just say that bad baby is a famous rapper? All right, I'm done. <laughs> Are you done? I'm quitting the show right now. All right, up next, TNT. Yeah. Episode seventeen. We talked about some uh, sales tricks that companies use to get you to buy things mm. you remember them uh yeah vaguely vaguely oh come on you act like this wasn't <laughs> we do a lot of content we do we, <laughs> we do. do a lot of content yeah we do we do it's like when people come and go hey do that episode i'm like oh, i don't exactly. remember exactly talking about that vaguely so all right what are these sales techniques you'll find out in just a second <laughs> I'm going to talk about sneaky psychology techniques that companies use to sell you products. Ooh. You ever um, heard of those? Like subliminal shit? Yeah, like yeah, like when they subliminally put shit right in your mouth. Do, like, you, do you have the Wendy's one on there? No, this is not – no, this is like – this is like actual techniques, not like not like examples of like Wendy's oh, using whatever. Okay. This is – it says that mar- marketers have mastered the art of using psychology against you. Mm-hmm. They exploit your vulnerability to different styles of propaganda. Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna th- Facebook is going to be my devil from here on out. It always has been the devil. But companies can trick you into buying more stuff and paying more for it than you ever would. And they have nine techniques in this article that were touched on. So basically, the first one is called priming. Wow. <laughs> you ever heard of that? Yeah, I have done a little of this in my, uh, in yeah. my day. What's your, uh, what's your primer? Uh, I like seven. Prime. Prime. Did you get that one? That was oh. so corny. Prime numbers, huh? <laughs> dun, dun, dun. I like 111 myself. Ooh. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, that's a good one. I like three ones in a row. It reminds me of three sticks. What do I, why? What does that mean? Are you talking know. about like sticks of reefer? <laughs> whoa. Reefer sticks? Whoa, whoa. Are you smoking reefer sticks don't, in the don't, house? Don't be, don't be putting drugs in my mouth <laughs> or my lungs or anything. I don't do anything that's illegal. 
Never one time have I done an illegal thing. I don't even speed. <laughs> that lie should two truths and a lie. <laughs> two truths and a lie. I'm a liar. I'm a liar. Wait, I'm a liar. Wait. Anyways, priming. It's where you show one image to affect the response to another image. The example of that would be it's you're more likely to recognize the word tasty after an image of a cheeseburger than if mm. they show you like a trash dumpster and then showed you tasty. Okay. Yeah. I so like so like you know a Wendy's commercial they're like try the big bacon burger double coronary artery bypass sandwich and then they're like tasty and you're like oh shit that, that sandwich was tasty as a bitch. Tasty. Yeah, but if they're like <laughs> check out this garbage pile Tasty. You're like, why the fuck they put tasty after the dumpster? Yeah. All right. Yeah, that one's kind of that's kind of light. That right. seems like just like common sense. Almost. Right, right, right. But it's still a trick. Yeah, yeah. The decoy effect. Ooh, I like this one. This is where you have your brother tag him in when you're hitting it from behind. <laughs> you tag your twin brother in when you're tired. <laughs> she thinks you can go full nonstop because you just like shoot and keep going. Somehow. I'm just like fucking her from behind. I tag you in. You fucking. <laughs> Yeah, right. isn't that what's that called? A sexual assault? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's called no, it's called sexual no, assault. No, there's a Jonas. joke, one of those joke sex things that's like called that the, the phantom something. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, we'll look it up. Yeah, yeah, not yeah, not like literally assaulting anyone. I would never do that. Decoy effect. They add an additional price option to make it seem like you're like you're getting a deal, although you're really spending more money than you need to. The example for this was a subscription to, like, a, a newspaper. So basically, the way it worked out is this company, they had three price options. The first one was you could get an online-only subscription mm -hmm. for $60. Seems reasonable, I guess. Not really. Um, it was just free. Yeah, right? No shit. Then you could also – you could get the paper – the newspaper version only for $125. Damn. Nobody's reading the fucking newspaper. No. Well, that, this is a little old, so I mean, we gotta like. Anyways, or then the third option was you could get the online subscription and the physical paper option for one hundred and twenty-five dollars. Well, that's also. just a better deal, Jonas. Right. Because so, I obviously I need both. Right, and that's what people think. So they said basically what happened was when they had this, they had this special up. Every, more people signed up for the paper and online together than anything else because they felt like they were getting more for their money. You can get your news anywhere. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, well, online you can get it anywhere. You don't need a physical know, paper. Right. Anyways, but what happened was what they did a test, and once they took off the option of the combo, paper and online for the same price as paper, everyone went online only. So it was like – so it was like because they had – you could do the combo. They're like, oh, I can get two subscriptions for less than what it would be for – you know. So people are stupid. <laughs> but but that happens all the time, dude. It'll be like I, – I mean it works because I have to say like you'll go in and be like, oh, I need like one box of tacos. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. <clears throat> but there'll be two for four. Right. One box is – like, Well, one place. box is $2 and you can get two for three. And you're like, yeah. oh well, I don't need two boxes, but I'll buy, I'll buy two because they're on sale. I'll need them eventually. Yeah, that shit works on me sometimes. Well, right, it does because you get this. You if you know you're gonna need the second one later, and you can get it for half price now, it just makes sense to buy it. But then what happens is you buy it and it goes bad. It goes bad, or you know, if, it, if you're doing that with perishable items, it's not very good. But if you're doing yeah. that with like, yeah, like taco shells or cans of corn or something <laughs> you never see the cans of corn on sale <laughs> buy two get one free <laughs> buy one for 60 cents get two for 99 crazy town podcast for your hot grocery tips <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly that's what we that's we're what we changing uh, surprise spoiler alert we're changing into a grocery blog after this episode oh we could do it we, yeah. we could do that shit why not do a grocery blog yeah let's do a, let's do one on the site a grocery blog? Yeah. Look for the Crazy Town Grocery Blog at crazytown.com coming next month. Not really. That's a joke. It's not. Oh, it's April. Ha <laughs> ha. April Fool's in the middle of April. Is this coming out on April Fool's? No, this is coming out. Oh, wait, it's already past April. <laughs> yeah, it's already past April. Fool's. <laughs> it's like the fucking. What is it? I don't know. We're recording this in April, but it's going to come out in May. 
Oh, okay. Yeah, so. Yeah, hey, April Fools. Ha ha, get it? Yep. It's late. Uh, ha ha, happy Cinco de Mayo, everybody. There's a backlog. <laughs> yeah, go back, everyone, check it out. The next one The uh-huh. Illusion of Scarcity. Uh huh. Only six left at this price. Get them while they last. And meanwhile, they have a whole stock in the back. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like, so you, you make them think that you have none left. And then people are going to buy it because they're like, oh, my God, I don't want to miss out on this great sale. Oh, my God, I don't need – I need 22 new pairs of underwear, Mom. You know? You could probably use 22 <laughs> new pairs of underwear. Wow, why don't you go buy some drawers? Man? I have not bought under – how often do you buy underwear? Um, Not yeah. super often. Yeah. And it's, not super It's probably often. been about – Three to four years for me. Is that bad? <laughs> and why'd you wow that? Ooh, is that bad? Wow. Is that bad? <laughs> I mean, you wash them, so I guess there's not. Yeah, like I mean, they're intact, man. Yeah, they don't like. Yeah, I got some cotton boxers, so like they don't really tear. They don't. I mean, they don't oh, break you're, down. You're they're cotton not... boy. See, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm polyester or cotton. I have a few cotton. Yeah, but there. if you do, if you go that route, they don't really break down. They don't have like those. Like if you exactly. go the ones that aren't cotton, they're more. They're more. Not rough, but they can tear. They do things, but the cotton ones that stretch those exactly. fuckers. Those and, and you wipe your ass like an adult man, yeah, I'm yeah. sure. So With the like... underwear, right? You just use the underwear to wipe it, right? That's what you mean. So what you do? You just sit down and you just pull the underwear up, wipe your ass. Oh and... yeah, you stand up, pull them in between your cheeks, and push them out, right? That's yeah. what you do. We call that <laughs> call that the peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Is that what that is? Yeah, dude, Where you use your ass to wipe your. Shorts? Yeah. Your shorts to wipe your ass? I don't know if that's what it's called, but it could be. Oh, okay. That's pretty gross, though. Right. Thank you for that. But that's the illusion of scarcity. Yeah. Um, yes. I would say you're probably due for at least one pack of underwear. Like, you can buy one pack of five, right? See, mix them in the rotation. Throw mix away the them into the rotation. That's how they do it, too. You got to mix them in. Yeah, you just mix them in the rotation. I don't know, man. I don't know if I'm ready for it. I'm kind of used to ones. Well, they I are have. restrictive and binding. And then before exactly. you know it, they become a part of you. That's a Wayne's World <laughs> reference right there, folks. I've never seen that movie. Uh, <laughs> have you really not? I have seen Okay. Uh, well, of all the movies that you haven't seen, I wouldn't be surprised if you haven't seen Wayne's World. That's uh, Party Time Excellent. It is. You know, I love that Wild movie. Stallions. That's a different movie. Okay, well. They're coming out with a third one of that, too. Are they? Yeah. Bill Keanu signed on and Bill S. Preston Esquire. Really? Mm-hmm. Both That's of them. Awesome. They're making, but they're, like, grown now. Yeah, I old. imagine. Well, obviously, older. Keanu Reeves is, like, 50. But, Damn, he is, like, 50. Yeah, he is. Still, All right. <laughs> still pretty hot, too. Uh, this next one is loss aversion. Oh, yep, 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 yep. It says people are more likely to act when they have something to lose as opposed to gaining the same thing. That's why companies offer free trials so customers will want to keep subscribing after the trial period is over because you don't want to give up what you have. Like, oh, I have Netflix now. It's free. I could just get a new email address and get a new free account. But, I mean, who would ever sign up for another free email on one of a thousand free email providers and get unlimited Netflix subscriptions when I can just pay for it? Is that what you do? No, I don't. Jesus, man. You sound like you had that mastermind out. No, I don't. <laughs> but um, I actually I – actually, Criminal intent in you today. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like plotting and planning. Jeez. No, man, I don't do that. I, I have Netflix, but I it's it's <laughs> Wow I do a little share and swap, you know what wow. I mean? You're allowed to have numerous users on Netflix, man. You know? I can anybody out there's got a cable login for Jonas. <laughs> cannot co sign for this. I will uh, I need the ESPN app if y'all want Spotify. Can- no, I'm just kidding, just kidding. No, no, fuck that. No more PC dynamite. Get your get your coin, King. <laughs> get your coin, King. <laughs> get Come your on, fuck. Bowser. Quit get this Mario shit get up. Get your there. coin. Wow. Coin King, I like it. Reci- reciprocity. 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 Yep. Which is basically if someone does something for you, we do something for them. You are more likely to want to do something for them. The example for this said that um, in a study, they found that if a waiter brings you out a mint with your check, more the tip. tip the tip on average is three percent higher than it would be if you brought no mint. It says in the same study, if you brought two mints. The tip was twenty percent higher than it was wow. than it would originally been. 
So all you waiters and waitresses out there, yeah. two mints. Anybody in food service, man. With every check. Invest in a bag of Starlights. Yeah, dude. I mean, I mean, but seriously, buy your own if the restaurant doesn't give them. Because right. you buy a $2 bag of Starlights and you get 20% more tips. I mean, you're going to get like, that's going to, was there 100 in a bag probably? Yeah. If not more? That's 50 tables, 20%. And, and yeah. I'm not going to lie. Like, if a restaurant sleeps me one of those fucking Andes. Oh, the yo, Andes, dude. That's definite tip. You get yeah. chocolate, not just a cheap oh starlight. God, those are the best you ever too. get the starlights that are that are spearmint? Blows my The green ones? Me. Yeah, boy. I don't like peppermint that much. I don't much. really care for either one. I'm not a peppermint guy, yeah. but like candy canes and all that shit. Mm. Spearmint candies? Rocks. Do you prefer the, the mints that are like that that melt? No, those fucking things are weird. <laughs> oh my god, they're like the devil's playground, man. Oh my devil's Jesus. Playground. It's like you put it in your mouth and it just like It starts melting and dissolving. It's like butter. And then it turns into like this honeycomb kind of like texture. It's like a froth. Yeah. Oh, oh, it's all frothy. It mouth. makes its own sauce in your oh, mouth. Oh, it's it makes fucking, its own gravy. Ew, it's a mint sauce for that for your viewing pleasure. Oh, God. Dude, they're like – it reminds me of like – I don't even know if it what it would be, but it's just like if you bite it, it's like chalk. But yeah. like if you suck on it, it just like – it like congeals into like a – Shit is fucking gross. It's, if you guys like those, send us a picture with you drooling it out of your mouth. <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't know. We are totally going to get porno pictures now. It's just you. like someone's like, oh, it pouring out of places. Huh? I know where I can stick don't, those. Don't mints. send us anything. Wow. Donations. Don't send, us, don't send us a big bag of those melt in your mouth mints. What are they? Are they Brock's? Is, are they are they the ones that make them? I don't know, dude. Sweet. You know what I do like? Chocolate covered raisins. Okay, well, they're fucking good. Well, you're allowed to be wrong. Yeah. About, wow. Yeah. What, what's your favorite candy? Uh, Reese cups, I guess. Wow. Yeah, that was a very easy. low key pretty... thing to say. <laughs> what is low tea about they're delicious? <laughs> what's low tea about delicious? <laughs> they had uh, the girl who played Wonder Woman in the movie. Uh, Gal Gadot. Yeah, that girl. They had her on like Conan or Jimmy Kimmel or something, and yeah, she ate the first that. Reese cup she'd ever eaten in her life. Yeah, and she looked stupid while she ate it because it was fucking amazing. She's like, "What is this? I'm not from America." Oh man, it changed her life. Man. One time I saw on Reddit somebody posted, you know, like in all of our stores, they have like the the Mexican aisle and the Asian aisle, or not aisle, but sections of the store that have like <laughs> those ethnic foods for those different what? <laughs> Nothing. I don't know. In my head, I have this picture like an aisle that only Mexicans can go down. <laughs> there's, like a, there's like a guard at the end of it. Like, He's like, let like, me check your blood. Just like extreme segregation. I don't Excuse know. Excuse me, <laughs> sir. You don't look Mexican enough to go down this like, aisle. You, know, you, go to the, you go to the bank and they have the Mexican aisle. And the Asian <laughs> no. aisle. But uh, somebody took a picture. I think it was a store in Finland. They took mm. a picture of like the American section. And it was all uh, like Nutella and Jolly Rancher Pop Tarts and fucking Cadbury eggs and like really? barbecue sauce. It was like it was nothing that like we really would eat. Like it was all like the it's like those tubes of sugar goo and like all like the flavored like syrup, like all that candy shit the kids eat. And that was like the whole section. And it was like and like all the comments were funny because people were like, "Oh my god, they make Jolly Rancher Pop Tarts." Where can I get those? <laughs> <laughs> fucking. But it was like the most. I was like, that doesn't really surprise me, honestly. I feel like the the fucking Asian section at, at fucking most grocery stores are pretty like fucking like Asian people don't eat this shit. Right, right, yeah, exactly. Pocky is fucking delicious. Pocky, or those little sticks with the chocolate or whatever on the end, or the white chocolate or the strawberry. Mm. Yeah, or those little koalas with the with the fucking chocolate in the center. You ever have them? I have not. They're uh, well, they used to sell them in America. They were what were they called? They came in like a little – the same kind of box. It's like an octagonal-shaped box that's like maybe four inches tall. Oh, Toblerone. Yeah, but they – no, not Toblerones. The people were pissed because they reshaped Toblerones. Did you see that online when that blew up? It was like a year ago. They they used to be a certain shape and size, and they changed it, and the internet like had a fucking heart attack. Yeah, I'm smaller. People, people love that shit. Anyways, uh, but they were like – they were called koala something, but they're like little – Almost kind of like a graham crackerish type thing, but it's they're like a 3D koala bear, and the inside of them is stuffed with chocolate. Mm. So it's like it's like a cookie coated chocolate, but it's shaped like a koala bear. They're actually fucking tremendously good. I don't, I'm not a huge candy guy, but anyways. So what was that one? What was what? That was reciprocity. That was reciprocity. Okay. How we got chocolate covered koalas? <laughs> I don't know. 
<laughs> Social proof. Sounds good, though. I like koala. Right, yeah. koala sound delicious. Oh, dude, I would love to eat a koala. <laughs> I mean, oh, wait. I mean, chocolate koala candy. Oh, we got, no, dude. That's, no, I wonder fine. if people eat koala. I'm sure is it, it would probably happen. No. It's it, an animal, dude. Is, you can I eat any animal. I thought they're endangered. You can eat any animal. If you want to eat a dog, go ahead and eat Can't it. Can't eat a bald eagle. That's illegal. Dude, did you see a bald eagle landed on a baseball player's head during the national anthem? No, but that's amazing. That's pretty fucking sweet. Talk about majestic as yes. fuck, right? He's like, caca! He just, <laughs> that is, that's at a, America. At a baseball game, he comes and lands on the fucking catcher's head while he's catching uh, the... Rips the MAGA hat off of his head. <laughs> he rips... The... <laughs> <laughs> Finds a field mouse in the outfield. He's like, caca! Fucking gets him. Social proof is the next one. Social proof. Social proof. Okay. People want to do something because other people do it. So basically, basically uh, the bandwagon approach, the whatever. It's example is like laugh tracks on a sitcom because when you hear the laughing in the background, it makes you want to laugh because everyone else is laughing. But an example of this would be like, you know, like, oh, there's a bunch of people having a fun time smoking Newports and drinking Coca-Cola. I want to smoke Newports. I want to drink Coca-Cola. Dude, they look like they're having fun. That's so true. It is. They look like they're having fun smoking all those Newport cigarettes. But like again, once again, that one's kind of just like common sense. You don't want to have a commercial where it's like some guy like sitting depressed in his room, <laughs> hiding, hiding the cigarette smoke from his wife. <laughs> He's like, "What are you doing in there?" And He's like waving the smoke out of it, like this fucking. Bitch. <laughs> At the end, he kills himself. <laughs> He's like <laughs> grabs the osium, starts spraying the room. I'm coming. Newport. Newport. <laughs> <laughs> Newport. Hide in the room like everyone else. Yeah, it's like fucking he's like he's like eating Doritos under the blanket, like fucking being shamed. She's like, Are you eating Doritos again? <laughs> no, ma'am, I'm not eating Doritos. <laughs> I want you to go to the gym for an extra hour tomorrow. Like, yeah. yeah, the shame. Yes, dear. <laughs> Doritos. They're all <laughs> That would be so awesome if that's how commercials work. <laughs> so, yeah, you want to show people enjoying life and shit. That makes yeah, sense. Yeah, that does make sense. It's All just right. like common sense. Yeah, that's true. That's true. All right. Uh, this is the seventh one. Anchoring. Ooh. It's you make decisions based off the first piece of information that you get. So basically what this is is an example is when you're out. You would maybe pay $50 for a shirt if it was marked down from $100, even if you normally wouldn't pay $50 for a shirt because it's per- <clears throat> it's, it's basically – it's like perceived value, value-based. Yeah. Like it's kind of like when you go to Marshalls or TJ Maxx, you're all like, oh, shit, this shirt used to be 60 bucks and now it's only fifteen ninety nine. That's a good deal, and it's Tommy or fucking Polo or Ralph Lauren. Or- Tommy! <laughs> I, love, I love throwing out the old shit for you, Tommy. dude. Tommy! <laughs> Does anyone wear Tommy anymore? No. They, they still- Unless it's ironic. Ironically, I have seen Tommy out people there. People don't – People. some people wear it. No. Like legit. They're like, oh, my no, God, Tommy's my favorite Tommy. brand, bro. Yeah, you're give not me, wrong. It's give me some store. Tommy. It's in Macy's, so somebody's fucking buying the shit. Oh, wow. Jesus. They have all those old brands. Like, oh, It's so funny how like the brands start somewhere, then they become pop culture, and then they go out of style, and then they just – everyone starts buying them. Like – now, like, is, for example, brands like Airwalker at Payless, Echo and Zoo Yorker at fucking J.C. Penny, like, just they're two for twenty T-shirts. You know what I mean? Like, what like happens, man? Tommy, Fubu, all those things. Are, they're now at like Coles and Mar- Macy's, and people just buy them because now they're just style and fl- fashion are fleeting, man. But they have they have brand power, so people who don't care about what they wear will buy it because it's on sale or because it looks cool or whatever, and they're just like, fuck it. I think it's hard for like clothing brands to like stay relevant. Like you know, like the uh, the super super expensive ones, the Gucci's, the fuck, and Supreme is like one of the new hot urban like uh, branding. But eventually, like their shirts right now going for like four hundred dollars, not right four hundred dollars for a right. Give it three years, fifteen hundred, and they'll be in Marshalls. They'll be in. They'll be fucking hanging out. Supreme will be just a brand that's around. It happened to True Religion. That was another like yeah. really good brand. They've they've been following lately. So yeah, like yeah. I don't but know. even like I just mentioned, like, even a brand like Echo when that first came out, their shit was fucking super expensive too. Back yeah, in the day, yeah. it was like fifty seventy dollars for a t shirt. That was. 
fucking back then. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's, it's more expensive. Yeah, now, exactly. So. All right, <clears throat> next one: the Bader Meinhof phenomenon. <laughs> I'm sorry, sir. <laughs> it's B A A D E R hyphen M E I N H O F. So Bader Meinhof phenomenon. It sounded like you just said profanity in German. I did. Yeah, <laughs> Zig Heil. Bader Meinhof. That's exactly what I said. Actually, <laughs> I'm glad that you cleared it up for me. It's basically the frequency of illusion is what this comes down to. It's where you start – where you see something somewhere, then all of a sudden you see it everywhere. Mm, it, my, the common. example that popped in my head is when you get a new car. Yeah. Because like you're like, oh, I've never seen a, this before. Then you get one and everywhere you go, you see those cars. It's like it, – basically what it says to it, it comes down to two things. When you first come across a new word, thing, or idea – you unconsciously start noticing it because of something called selective attention. Then each time you see it, it's additional proof that it's everywhere. It's a phenomenon known as confirmation bias. I get it. Yeah. I get it. It's basically like uh, Common and Dwayne Rock Johnson, how like they're fucking everywhere and then like every fucking movie. And I'm like, dude, right. he's taking over the world. Well, and it's true because they like you world. hear a word that you've never heard before. Like, Whatever, you know, and you hear something, you're like, fuck, what the fuck is that? Or then all of a sudden you just hear it. Yeah. What, for, an, for an example, this was years ago. I heard the first, I remember the first time I ever heard the word wherewithal. And I was just like, wherewithal? I was like, is that yeah. even a fucking word? Yeah. And whoever I was with was like, yeah, dude, it's a fucking word. I use, I've used it all the time. And I was like, oh, that's fucking weird, whatever. Then, like, I hear the fucking word. All, people use that word all the fucking time. And I'm like, <laughs> I've used it. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, I'm talking, this yeah. is like 10, 15 no, years ago. You yeah, know what yeah. I mean? But, like, I, that was the one that sticks out to me. Cause then after I heard someone use it, I fucking heard it everywhere. I just had, I just had a similar thing with fucking vehemently. Oh, yeah, yeah, you use that as yeah, one of our words yeah, for the... Yeah, like, this is fucking happening all the time. So, yeah, yeah, I guess that makes sense. So, it's like it's it's c more current in your brain, so yeah. it's more... Re it's like it's like floating on the top of the water, so it... So, how would, how would a business utilize that? What would they do? You say, like, a car, but... That's like when you buy the car, though. But yeah. it's like... Um, oh, okay. But, but, yeah. but, so what, but if you start advertising... You but say you start advertising a new product, <clears throat> the more you get it out there in people's minds, the more they think they see it everywhere. It's all an illusion. It's not true. Yeah. It's just that it's new in their head. They've never heard of it before. Then they start seeing it at Walmart, and they see it at fucking Target, and they hear people talking about it. I want they, my baby back, baby back. Right. You know, things like that. You know? Have you guys heard the new Chili's jingle? It's really hot. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's saying that. The Thing. guy that says that to you, you can shoot him. The things that no one has ever said. Have you heard that new Chili's <laughs> jingle? It's really fucking hot. All right, here's the last one. Uh, the power of anecdote. Uh, basically, it's testimonials. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People yeah. telling their story, making the product more appealing. If you get Dwayne The Rock Johnson out there going... God, I love Cheerios. He's everywhere. Yeah, everywhere. <laughs> You're even saying it. I mean, God, I'm even. I am becoming the Rock. <laughs> that will never happen. I couldn't become the Rock. I, he doesn't have as much enough charisma. Oh. <laughs> yeah, because you know he he lacks charisma. If there's one thing, the Lock, the Lock, Rock Johnson, the Rock Lock, the Rock Lock, Rock Block, the Rock Block Johnson <laughs> says, "What is what's the thing?" <laughs> What is it? It's power of anecdote. Okay. What is, what is that? What, how, would they, how would they use it's it? Testimonials. People tell their story to make it seem more appealing. So, so they have people be like, oh, before I used acne brand face wash, my life was a giant pimple. Now I'm so clear you could eat off my face. Oh. You know, I've never had my toilet so clean, but then I bought Ajax power blowing ass wash. And before you know it, I was eating my spaghetti out uh, of the toilet. That's like the commercials where, where the lady gets up there and she's not an actor. I'm not an actor. And at the bottom it says paid. <laughs> paid <actor. laughs> she's not an actor. We didn't pay her for acting. I like the one that's like for the rehab clinic, and there's that guy who's obviously <laughs> what <laughs> he's obviously not a doctor, and he has on like a he has on scrubs and a stethoscope around his neck, and in the bottom it says paid actor, and he's like, "Come to the such and such rehabilitation clinic." I've never Can seen your this commercial, <laughs> dude. I'll have to show it to you. Is this an Austin thing? Uh, no, I think it's like a national. Oh, was it a meme? No, it was no, not a meme. It's not a meme, dude. Oh, okay. I saw it on the TV or something. I don't okay, know. all right. Maybe I'm making it up. Wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, you know, I tend to tell the truth constantly. You ready? For what? That was it. That was on my <laughs> What am I 
ready for if that was it. You ready to wrap up the segment? Oh, we're wrapping it up. The Crazy Town Podcast. TNT, we just helped everyone not be tricked anymore. I'm glad that we could be of service. Sometimes we do good for the community. Sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes we hit them with the hard pills to swallow. Yeah. That depress yeah. you. Yeah. You know what? who else does good things for the community? The police. <laughs> but guess what? <laughs> sure, this girl in the bikini can get a thousand likes. How many for our boys in blue? <laughs> <laughs> but sometimes the police make mistakes, TNT. This goes all the way back to episode one of right. this season. A man, a man was suicidal and had doused himself in gasoline. Oh, wow. Yeah, so, something crazy happens. Man, I don't yeah. remember anything you, you he said. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Nothing. Holy shit. He, he has a good memory, guys. <laughs> <laughs> but you'll hear in just a second what it is. TNT, have you ever heard about the police making a mistake about anything? <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> I still seriously hate you. No, Jonas, never. You've never? <laughs> wow. Do you know? I respect our boys in blue farts too much. Policemen are normal people, too. They make mistakes. What? Mm-hmm. All right, right. I'm just I'm just have something in mind. What particular mistake did they make this time? Oh, I don't have anything in mind. That's that's another topic. Oh, Anyways, oh. no, I'm joking. I'm joking. I really do. So, I want to tell you. A little, let, let's start the very first story of season two off. I I want to tell you a little a little ditty. Okay. This this story starts in Arlington, Virginia. That's home of propane and propane success accessories. Is it? Yeah. Oh. Well, that's good. Anyone who needs propane, <laughs> if you're a propane guy, <laughs> is that remember it's that old band it. in the fucking nineties called Propane? Do you ever hear about them? They're P R O P I A N or P A I N. Yeah. Oh God! I remember that. One of my mom's ex boyfriends used to listen to that, or had a friend that used to listen to that. That and like they were, I mean, her her boyfriend was okay. The, his friend was a fucking interesting cat, man. I'll tell you. <laughs> He listened to propane, so I guess that tells you anything. Anyways, set the scene. Arlington, Virginia, not far oh. from our capital of this country. Yeah. A man is suicidal. Okay. <laughs> please, please get a call. Get nine one one. I'm gonna, not, I'm gonna not be so dramatic. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get back. No, here. dude, I like to dramatic. <laughs> well, okay, here we go. <clears throat> Two women. With no idea how to save a man, call 911 frantic. The dispatcher answers the call. The women say, <laughs> anyways, the women call and say this dude is mentally ill and he's suicidal and he's at their home and they were afraid that he would commit suicide. Police get dispatched out. They roll out to see what sort of trouble was afoot. So what do you think this man was doing? I mean, what would it, what, what would a, a suicidal man, what, what is the first thing, like, not someone who's like really suicidal, like that's by themselves, like about to kill himself, like, you know, if you're saying you're oh, suicidal yeah. in front yeah. of a bunch of people causing a crazy muck. Oh, you're saying he was feigning suicide. Well, I, I mean, first of all, anybody who's, who's thinking seek help because we do not support suicide. Not one um, bit. But I, I, I would what's, think hey, that what's he that, what's that popular it? song right now? They, he does the suicide hotline number on his song. Uh, that is Logic, actually. I don't know the name, the number, the, the number is the name of the song. But I would think that he was maybe holding a knife to himself or acting like he was going to jump off a roof. Well, close. He, okay. uh, the police get to the home and he was inside the home and he had doused himself in gasoline. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, that's one way to do it. You know, a normal Tuesday. Yeah, yeah. The cops go in, and you know they they're afraid that he's gonna you know set set himself on fire. Obviously, and they get the two women out of the house because then there's no witnesses. Am I right? That was me shooting off my my shooter McGavin guns like pa 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 pa, <laughs> like Yosemite Sam. Yeah, like <laughs> yes. I don't know who that is, by the way. Yosemite yeah. Sam. Yeah. Oh, he was a total non. Uh, <laughs> racial toned cartoon character from the fifties. Like, oh you were oh. <clears throat> oh, okay. All right. Yeah. You wait, you legitimately don't know who Yosemite Sam is? 
Dude, I'm a millennial. What the fuck would oh, I know about that's right. Looney we always, Tunes? We always talk about how you're the <laughs> oldest millennial in the country. <laughs> What would I know about Looney Tunes? I'm a millennial. Right, right. All right. So this guy starts pouring more gas on himself after the war uh, at the house. So this oh, is what man. This, this is from the police's account. Yeah. And they also say that the man had something in his hand. Something. Yes. Okay. Let's play a, a little game. Let's let's play. Guess what's next? Oh Andy, man. What do you think happened here for the cops to screw up? Let me set the scene. There's a man in a house. They have something in his hand. They think it may be potentially a lighter. He's covered in gasoline. He's suicidal. What do the cops do? And tell us, this is, this is a little dark for the Crazy Town podcast. But I mean, Wait, is anything <laughs> too dark for the Crazy no, Town podcast? Okay, well, okay, yeah, that's true. We talked about dolphin hand jobs. Okay, <laughs> I'm guessing that shot, the, one of the cops shot and fucking ignited the guy and fucking they all died. <laughs> Wow. No, no. They didn't okay. shoot him, but you're kind of close. They they decided that he, they would use a taser on him. Well, Needless to say, when you put a taser on a man doused in gasoline, he engulfs in flames. That's not a good idea. <laughs> right? Right. So, hey, the policeman made a mistake. <laughs> he thought that using the taser was the right thing to do. Yeah, dude. And uh, so I have a couple quotes from the uh, chief or the chief of the police, I think. I don't have I don't have his name written down. He says, first, he acknowledged the risk of using an electrical stun gun near gasoline. But he said the man was, in quotes, very frantic and erratic and became a danger to everyone in the room. You don't just tackle the fucker and lock him up in cuffs. You know, you shoot him with a taser. Yeah. Right, because, you know, gasoline is, is kills you when it's just gasoline. <laughs> Anyways, oh. so he also says, <sighs> we, we realize that a taser can have some other implications, but we also know he had something in his hand. It was unclear at that moment whether he became engulfed in flames from the gasoline and the ignitable object he had in his hand or from the taser. How was it unfucking clear? He tased him and he burst into flames. Yeah, he, you know, like the hey. fucking Johnny Torch from right. the Fantastic so he, so he Four. To, uh, so he tried to pass the blame a little bit. Like, hey, uh, we don't know if it was his lighter or our taser that caught him on fire. I mean, hey, uh, stuff happens. Yeah, I'm sure you had to wherewithal to flick the lighter after you fucking tased him with 10,000 volts from <laughs> those goddamn body. Right, he goes and he, like, stiffens up, starts shaking, and he's like, oh, wait one second. And he, like, he's like, he has, yeah. it's like one of those Zippos, and it doesn't light the first 19 <laughs> times. That's, what, that's what I was thinking, too. <laughs> he's, like, fucking convulsing, gets the lighter fluid, <laughs> and fucking fills it. Okay, this is, see, this is too dark. Yeah, so anyway, I, I don't, I don't. I don't think, I don't think the, I like, and I don't have it written down, but I don't think the man died. Obviously, he got burns and whatnot. Yeah. Um, but, you know, but it was 100% because the police did that. That reminds me, a little callback, episode five, I believe, uh, they talk about a casino bombing that no one remembers from the 80s, and there was a police mistake on that one, too. I'm not going to spoil it, but if you want to hear about more police mistakes... Oh, I guess there's an, there's one in episode, uh, what was it, 16, where they left that guy out of jail early? That was another, like... You know what, Jonas? I don't like this narrative that you're building, that these police are out here just oh, making I love, mistakes. I love police. Police do so much good stuff for this country. I mean, even the one, you know, that, you know, does things and whatnot and everything. You know, <laughs> you know that guy. You like, know, the guy who does yeah. all the stuff. So. Yeah, him. They protect and serve, man. They, yeah, they do. you know, it's they have a hard job. They don't get paid enough. I mean, right. they put up with a lot of bullshit. They do things I would never want to do in my life. I do not want to hunt down people that are trying to kill people and rob people and murder people and all sorts oh, of stuff. Nope. Not at all. I'm good just hanging out. Just talking on this podcast, talking about all the stuff that they do. I'm, I'm flapping my big I'm fat guns way, about them. I'm way better <laughs> talking about everything that they do than actually going out and doing it. 
So, so you don't know if the guy survived or not. I, you know, I read the, I read the article. I did because I read every article that I do. Yeah. But I uh, forgot to write down if he lived or died. Is that bad? <laughs> is, that, is that bad of me? At least it's like a, it's like the Alfred Hitchcock endings. You know what I mean? It's like yeah, you know. Yeah, we ain't seeing him here, guy. Oh, yeah, that's fine. Either way, he's pretty fucked up. I mean, he was doused in gasoline. He burst into flames. I mean, how many how many seconds do you think it takes to put a towel on a tased man on fire? How do you think a towel is going to? <laughs> Extinguish the flames if he's saturated with gasoline. Oh wow, maybe he did die. <laughs> like, cause he probably burn up pretty quick, huh? Thank you for bringing the story that recounts the last moments of this man's <laughs> life and bringing that to the public. <laughs> First episode, here we go. Hey, I told you we're coming out on fire this season, <laughs> literally. But boom, boom, pun intended. Oh All my right, God, that's but cool. uh, we're gonna go ahead and take a break. The Crazy Town Podcast. Why would you tase a guy with gasoline on him? Look, our boys in blue, they make mistakes too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Does not matter if you're wearing blue or red. I mean, I didn't know if he died or not. You gave me a real hard time about that. You're yeah. like, you don't know if he died. I'm like, ah. uh, I tell you, he definitely has a lawsuit pending against whatever police department was associated with it. What if they said he was resisting? Like, stop um, resisting, and they just... I'm pretty sure if a person is resistant, you try to restrain them. You don't ignite them. Oh, that's what you do? <laughs> well, they didn't mean to ignite him. They just didn't realize that tasing a man doused in gasoline would ignite him. It's a mistake. That's why it's called an accident. You don't... It, if it was on purpose, it'd be called on purpose. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah. I'd still uh, definitely Soon? have oh, my yeah. lawyer. You at least try, yeah. All right. The last one is a double whammy. It's part of a quick hit. We did a couple quick hits on this season. From episode 16, we talk about pairs of hands washing ashore and then surgeon artwork. Pairs of hands. Why do they have to be pairs? Because there was an even number. Right. Hands, we're talking, no, we're talking hands, about... hands come in pairs. I know, but who says pairs of hands? Well, how many times are they not attached to the body? <laughs> You can just say, like, a sack of hands. Sack. Okay. <laughs> that probably would have been better. No, it's fine, dude. All right. Well, what are we talking about? It's a sack Find of Find out hands. right now. Kabarosk. K-H-A-B-A-R-O-V-S-K. Kabarosk. It's a uh, far east in Siberia, mm -hmm. close to the border of China. They were uh, hanging out, you know, bag washes up on shore. They're like, oh, man, what's hang what's in this bag? Oh, 27 pairs of hands. Just, just pa 27 <laughs> pairs? 27 pairs of hands. So 54 hands. 50 yeah, it says 27 pairs of hands washed up in on a small island inside the Amur River. All but one of them were inside the bag. So there was 53 in the bag, and one was just hanging out. That was like the – that was like he got disciplined. He's like, sorry, you hand. You have to ride in the river all by yourself. So, yeah, you just hung out. Yeah, there was – 53 fucking hands. Yeah, they were found at a popular fishing area, yeah. but they say there was nothing suspicious. Okay, what? is it is it no, the is no. it the bag of fifty four hands suspicious enough to warrant a little bit of an investigation? Yeah, I'm thinking some suspicion arises. They're like, well, there was no blood, but there was fifty four hands. Yeah, well, place close. Like, like they were just loose leaf hands. Yeah, just you know, because it's a it's a <laughs> commonplace occurrence to have. Sometimes hands just you know end up in bags. It's fucking crazy. Yeah, it says uh, they have no idea where they came from. Just some random theories. And when they reached out to the police for comment. They refuse to make a comment about oh, it. Oh, it's a it's a it's a mafia thing. It's, well, it's some Russian government shit, probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, it's a little. You know, bit. though, I would like to have like a human hand hanging from like around my mirror, my rearview mirror. Oh, like a real one, like a smoked hand. Yeah, like like a little like, like a, little... a monkey claw. Yeah, but a human one. Oh, like oh, that's you know that's legit. That's that's normal. I mean, that's what I mean. Maybe you can get a shrunken head. Go find a voodoo princess in Nola. <laughs> Go out to New Orleans, Maybe. find yourself a voodoo shaman. They they exist there? Uh, I think that's where they do. Yeah, they okay. do voodoo in New Orleans. <laughs> Is that what we're calling it now? <laughs> New Orleans. <laughs> okay. I don't, I don't think that's going to catch on. We can try. <laughs> We can totally try to make Next it Next story is from New Orleans. The next story is from New Orleans. 
Gotta say it like that. Okay. New O pause. Comma, comma, lens. Maybe two commas. New O. Ooh. Lens. Ooh. I like there that. We go. I like that. All right. That. I'm just going to keep the quick hits going. This one's a little longer. Let's go. Fuck it. Have you ever heard of Simon Bramhall? Sounds like a fucking asshole, doesn't he? Is that the American Idol guy? No, that's, no, Simon. that's Simon Cowell. Okay. He's like, oh, bloody hell, you suck. <laughs> Mean British guys are fucking great. Dude. Yeah, they are. They're pretty good. Who's the chef? Oh, the guy from the kitchen chef show? Chef Ramsey. Yeah, that yeah, guy. He's, just... he's like, you're a fucking bitch and you don't know how to cook chicken. Like, <laughs> it's <he's> fucking like... <laughs> raw! <laughs> like, whoa. He's like, sir, you're the only one raw in this room if anything's whoa. happening. Okay, yeah. speaking of which, he's British. Of course. And he's a surgeon. He, you know... He he was in there doing some things, you know. Surgery, perhaps? Yeah, he was surgery and okay, enough people, yeah, okay. you know. And uh, he uh, recently got in trouble. For? He decided to, you know. Have his, sex with the bodies. No, no, no. You know, inscribe his initials on their liver while he was, <laughs> while he was replacing <laughs> oh, it. I heard about this. So he, uh, so he wrote on their livers to patients. With an argon laser, which is said is used normally during surgeries to stop blood flow, sorry, stop blood flow and resection organs, like when you're in a surgery. So that sounds like a great plan, right? Like, talk about fucking God complex, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> no, he's in there I like, he's like, I just replaced their fucking liver. I'm going to sign off on that shit. Honestly, if he does a good job, am I going to be mad that he signed his work? I maybe want like a commission. You want to commission? You're going to commission? Yeah, because we're like, listen, Doc, I'm going to commission you to draw a house on my liver with a laser. Yeah. Cut me open, draw that shit up, sell me back up. Yeah, that's some, fine with that. He had yeah. some shading. It was like he, he was cross <laughs> cross hatching on it. He's like fucking Bob Ross. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like there's a pretty little tree, a pretty little mountain. <laughs> so he branded, since he branded. So he branded their internal organs, yeah, obviously. which isn't cool. So <laughs> That's not cool? No, nah, dude. I just wanted to make sure the listeners knew that we knew that wasn't cool. Oh, oh. Because we joked about it. Yeah, we, did we cool. joke about it? Oh, yeah, yeah, we did. Oh, yeah, we made it seem like it wasn't a big deal, It was huh? literally 15 seconds ago. Oh, but okay. Was it? Is that what we did? Okay. I, I'm like a goldfish guy, so I Jonas don't has lost it. I don't remember what we talk about from one minute to the next. That's cool. But yeah, he did it. So since it's inside, mm. I mean, he it's a pretty it's a pretty good plan, I guess, because you would assume that no one would ever find out. Because it's, I mean, how are you ever going to get your liver looked at again? Until they get checked up, I guess. Well, what happened was one of the patients had more problems with their liver, and they mm. had some other doctor open them back up to fix the problem. Mm. And he goes in, and he's like. Can you imagine this surgeon? He cuts him open, gets to the liver, and there's a big old SB on him. <laughs> he's like, what the fuck? <laughs> Why is there an SB on this liver? So uh, so needless to say. Is that what he just put, an SB on? He put his initials. Yeah, oh. he put SB. So he's like, I'll sign off on this. It's like when I do a painting and I put my initials on it. Yeah. I put like JJ on him. You know what I mean? I put fucking. Oh yeah! By the way, listeners, Jonas is a bit of an artist. Yeah, I got He's a little bit of a surrounded time. by his works now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm you a... should put them up on the website. Should I? Yeah. yeah. Put your SB down. Put my put my SB out. <laughs> SB on everybody. Yeah. Not, well, we could just say we're gonna SB on somebody. Well, they don't even know what we're talking about. <laughs> Sounds illegal. It does. <laughs> it does. <laughs> Funny enough. So he was charged with assault by beating. By beating? Yeah, that's what it was called. They said it sounds way worse than it is. But the beating part refers to the physical act of inscribing the liver with a laser. That They call that beating. Is that like, so that's British terminology, I would think. I don't know, dude. Probably. Because beating don't sound like something I ever heard of over here. Oh, there's definitely beating. <sighs> <laughs> it's just not no dude sense. let's go you want to go down that rabbit hole we can no talk. i'm not going down the okay. beaten rabbit hole no. all right but yeah how, how many years did he get well his sentence 12 months community order which i tried to look that and up yes yeah, the community yeah. service well, sounds and like. uh so he so here so he's god i can't even, I, like I'm, I'm so flabbergasted by this so he's Lasers his initials on somebody's liver, two yes. people's livers. He beat the liver up. His 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 twelve month community order. He has to serve a hundred and twenty hours of unpaid work. So they're making him do more surgery 
for free. Is that what he's doing? Is it unpaid says, work? It says or? 120 hours of unpaid work. So I don't know if that meant community service That's what I'm thinking. or like they're making him do surgery for free. Dude, what the fuck is the legal system over in fucking the UK doing? Come on. I don't what the know. Fuck it's beating. And he had to pay 10,000 pounds, which is. I don't even know how. That's too much to lift. You can't pay that much. <laughs> you can't bring that in all the time, it's officer. too much. So what's he going to do? Pay it in pennies. It's quicker. What's Right? He can wheelbarrow man like somebody did to the DMV. You want to hear about that? <laughs> episode 15 or 16. This motherfucker knows the episodes by heart. Some of them. Not all of them. <laughs> all right. So if he was – so if he put his initials on the ones he was getting paid for, yeah. is he going to like start drawing dicks on the livers of the ones that he's doing for free? Like could you imagine if he would have drawn a dick? On this person's liver instead yeah. of his initials. Like a little – just a little ball bag and a, and a little penis. <laughs> just like they open it up. There's just a penis on your liver. Honestly, I was thinking that if the guy fucking, you know, started getting better with it, he could start doing like pictures like the whole Bob Ross thing. And then he could make that his thing. Like I'm the surgeon that makes your fucking internals look beautiful. But – you would think eventually that would cause some sort of issue well, to the liver. We're not concerned about that, dude. It's all about aesthetics. Oh, right? it's like like people like play football, then are like, "Oh man, I have concussions and my brain's fucked yeah. up," like that kind of thing. Like <laughs> later down the, down the road, no. when they do that. No, I'm saying like when girls wear high heels. Sure, it's bad for your posture, your legs, your ankles, but it looks good. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I'd get like fucking Louis Vuitton. Like, you get like an uh, LV put on your liver? No, like a bunch of them. So it looks like my liver is Louis oh, like the Oh, like the design. Yeah. Oh, I gotcha. Yeah. What's the other one? Uh, the other Gucci. one? Gucci. Yeah, there you go. I mean, so, okay. So let me ask you a question. What's you go that? in for surgery. Uh-huh. For, and so, somebody draws on you, and, and you have to go back in. You found out that he drew a penis on your liver. Would oh. you be mad, or would you laugh about it? Like, would you I be would, like, man? No, dude, because I'm going to look at that like a payday. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> Are you kidding? And, well, so then you'll be laughing because you'll be laughing all the way to the bank. Oh, oh but it, he got it. I did. I, I would have like I like I would definitely sue him, but like when we got done, I'd have to be like, that was pretty good, man. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta say, I mean, I can't really encourage you then drawing you, on my yeah, liver. Yeah, then you can tell everybody you got a dick inside you, no matter <laughs> where you go. <laughs> the Crazy Town Podcast. Yeah, TNT. A yeah. bunch of hands. Big old sack of hands. Well, one of them was out of the sack. There was 53 <laughs> in the sack, and one just floating around by itself. Uh, yeah, okay. I don't my favorite part was like, what's the comment from the police? No comment. Like, nothing suspicious, except for there's... 27 people yeah. without fucking hands exactly. somewhere. Yeah. Like, what do you even need that Another many hands Another cop mistake, for? I guess. Somebody was collecting hands, and they just threw out their whole yeah. collection, yeah. probably. And then we talked about a little bit of surgeon art, drawing a penis on your liver. Oh, the, the surgeon yeah. Tools. Yeah, that's lovely. Yeah, you know? But you know what? That's all the time we have for the second volume of season two. Number six overall for the best of. It's over. It is. Before we go, though, make sure you follow us on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash crazytownmedia. Our YouTube channel, Crazy Town Media. Make sure you subscribe to get all our content, gaming videos, podcasts, and other Twitch, or I'm sorry, Twitter, at Crazy Town Media. For Jonas, for TNT Dynamite, we are out. <laughs>